the wall. When I was 11 years old, my father decided he needed a new wall on the front of his shop. It would be a big wall, roughly 12 feet high by 20 feet long. The old wall was crumbling and he was sick of looking at it. But rather than hire a contractor or a construction company, he thought it would be a good project for my younger brother, Harry and me. Daddy O did the demolition. I remember looking at that gaping hole in excruciating disbelief. I was utterly certain that there would never be a wall there ever again. Every day for nearly a year, my brother and I would go to my father's shop after school to work on that wall. He made us do everything ourselves. We dug the footing, mixed the mortar, and carried the buckets. I still remember the formula. Two parts cement, one part sand, one part lime. Harry was in charge of the hose. We'd mix the pile with the shovels out on the sidewalk and then fill two gallon buckets and lay our separate bricks. We did it without any rebar or wood forms, just one of those levels with the little water bubble in the middle. If you know anything about construction, you know this is a loony ass way to do this. If we keep it real, this is chain gang kind of labor. Today, we would just call Child Protective Services. This is a job so tedious and unnecessarily long that what ended up taking two kids most of a year would have only taken a team of grown men a couple of days at most. My brother and I worked weekends, holidays, vacations. We worked through the summer that year. It didn't matter. My father never took a day off, so neither could we. There were so many times I remember looking at that hole, totally discouraged. I couldn't see how this was ever going to end. The dimensions became unfathomably large in my mind. It seemed like we were building the Great Wall of West Philly, billions of red bricks stretching infinitely into some distant nowhere. I was certain that I would grow old and die still mixing concrete and carrying those buckets. But Daddy-O wouldn't let us stop. Every day we had to be there, mixing concrete, carrying buckets, laying bricks. It didn't matter if it was raining, if it was hot as hell, if I was mad, if I was sad, if I was sick, if I had a test the next day, there were no excuses. My brother and I tried to complain and protest, but it made no difference to Daddy-O. We were trapped. This wall was a constant. It was permanence. Seasons changed. Friends came and went. Teachers retired. But the wall remained. Always the wall remained. One day, Harry and I were in a particularly stank mood. We were dragging our feet and grumbling impossible this and ridiculous that. Why we have to build a wall for anyway? This is impossible. It's never going to get done. daddy -o overheard us, threw down his tools, and marched over to where we were yapping. He snatched a brick out of my hand and held it up in front of us. Stop thinking about the damn wall, he said. There is no wall. There are only bricks. Your job is to lay this brick perfectly, then move on to the next brick, then lay that brick perfectly, then the next one. Don't be worrying about no wall. Your only concern is one brick. He walked back in the shop. Me and Harry just looked at each other, shook our heads. Old boy is a kook. And we just went back to mixing. Some of the most impactful lessons I've ever received, I've had to learn in spite of myself. I resisted them, I denied them, but ultimately the weight of their truth became unavoidable. My father's brick wall was one of those lessons. The days dragged on and as, as much as I hated to admit it, I started to see what he was talking about. When I focused on the wall, the job felt impossible, never ending. But when I focused on one brick, everything got easy. 
I knew I could lay one damn brick well. As the weeks passed, the bricks mounted and the hole got just a little bit smaller. I started to see that the difference between a task that feels impossible and a task that feels doable is merely a matter of perspective. Are you paying attention to the wall or are you paying attention to the brick? Whether it was acing the test to get accepted into college, hitting it big as one of the first global hip hop artists or constructing one of the most successful careers in Hollywood history. In all cases, what appeared to be impossibly large goals could be broken down into individually manageable tasks.